Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness Podcast. You guys, your host here, Danita, as always, and excited to be bringing on Coach Daisy. Coach Daisy is one of the most brave women I have met in my life, and I'm excited to share with you her journey and how she has become so brave in her life and some of her accomplishments. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. Daisy has lost over 100 pounds naturally. She is a suicide survivor where has left her as a single mother of four teenagers. She's a certified personal trainer and an insanity instructor, and she has been with Booty Bands for over four years as a coach. We absolutely love her because she definitely goes into a self-love warrior, and she's an absolute badass. Let's get started. So the first question I want to ask you is, when was the time in your life that you were afraid? Every day. Honestly, I would have to say just becoming a mother would have been my biggest fear because you don't want to, you know, mess up. You don't want to cause harm to this child that you brought into the world. You want to make sure that you're instilling all the proper morals and characteristics that any upstanding adult is going to have and you really have no instruction manual they just give you an infant and they they let you leave the hospital with that infant that you just created but you have no idea how to take care of and when I had my son I was 19 and I was still a baby myself and now all of a sudden I was responsible for a whole another human being and I had no choice but to grow up you know, before that, I was partying too much. I was probably on a path of self-destruction, basically the highway to hell, right? That's that's where Daisy was going in her teen years. And my son really just hit him being created just really saved my life because it really forced me to slow down and think about some of the choices that I was making um, and definitely opt for some better ones. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I think a lot of women and moms in general can relate on that one as far as what a turning point in your life of having to take care of another human being besides yourself. So dogs don't count you guys. It's another human being. (laughs) It's another human being. I know. I couldn't even keep a dog or a cat alive, but my kids have made it so far. So what was the factor that made you decide between like going down a path of least resistance during more of a path of strength? I think the turning point was really when my son was about a year and a half old and we made the decision to move to Colorado. Um, We were living in Alaska at the time and we had a lot of toxic family members that were around us and just kind of trying to dictate how we were raising our child and really instilling some beliefs that we weren't... um, completely aligned with. Um, So we made the decision. I was 21 at the time to pack up everything that we owned, which wasn't very much, and moved to Colorado just on a whim. I had never left Alaska before. My plan was that I was always going to put my child first. I was always going to make sure that whatever decision that I made, that it was probably going to be in the best interest of my child. At that point, I only had one. The path of least resistance would have been staying in Alaska, right? Because I had family surrounding me. I had free babysitters. I had comfort. But I think that was the first time I actually realized that we don't grow in our comfort zones. We actually have to challenge ourselves to continue to grow. That lesson for me, fortunately, came really early in life. So about 21. Yeah, thanks for sharing. A lot of people don't know that. And that I I appreciate you sharing that, that as far as the challenging makes you grow. So tell me more about that. What do you think the challenges in those difficult times make us grow or made you grow as an individual? Because they force you to adapt, right? They, they force you to look at things a different way because now you're not in that same ball, right? We, We live our lives in this little ball and anything outside of this ball is not comfortable people like to stay in this ball but the problem is is this ball is where depression and anxiety live because unless we're growing we're not nurturing all of our senses we are designed to explore we're designed to grow we're designed to adapt and if we're not fulfilling that that's where all of these ailments are coming from 
Oh, that's awesome. I really like how you put that, that almost like this little ball and that's where this depression is and what you feel trapped. And so that analogy really gave a great description of what that looks like. And so how long would you say you were in a ball? And then what did you do to kind of break that ball to be able to start pushing yourself through that? Wow. So when I, when I found myself in my ball and I was in a depression ball for a very long time was my husband passed away and he had actually committed suicide um and that kind of threw me for a loop and it really it really just ripped apart everything that i had created for you know, 9 years before that so i was completely lost i was completely thrown for a loop and i didn't know where i was going and so i turned to drugs and alcohol and anything i could do to kind of numb that pain fast forward a couple of years i decided to go ahead and enroll myself into school there I broke out of that ball just a little bit, right? And so I, I went to business school. And then I decided that it wasn't just business that I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn how to weld. So broke out a little bit more, went to school for welding, which <laughs> women welding, that's completely unheard of. It was something that I always wanted to do. So I did it. And then boom, decided to start a welding company because I had business training, right? And now I had welding experience. So I started a welding company, joined the plumbers and pipe fitters union, moved back to Alaska and decided to start my own company. Little things, little, just breaking away, breaking away, breaking away, breaking away until before you know it, it's a habit to continuously challenge yourself and to continuously step out of that comfort zone and continuously grow. Definitely. So if somebody is in that decision-making, I again, love this analogy you got going on here. So if somebody is about ready to make that decision, whether it is a divorce or a move or a new job direction, what is what is something that if you could bring yourself back to that time in your life and what was going through your mind, what what allowed you to really make that final decision to just make that turning point? So actually, this is really relatable for me right now because I am actually going through another transformation in my life and not a lot of people know this, so I'll share. Did just break up with my fiance. We were together for about nine years, um, but the last few years have just been a complete struggle. I mean, we loved each other, but we were fighting all the time and it was just an intense cycle of toxicity, finding myself getting more and more wrapped up in the situation back into the little ball. And it wasn't until I had to step back and kind of evaluate my situation. You can look at it at day to day and you can say, hey, I can put up with this. It's fine. I'm sad today, but maybe tomorrow will be better. And you can look at it day to day or you can look at it long term. Ask yourself, like, really, is this how I want to live the rest of my life? If your situation has been the same for a year or more and you're not happy, you really have to make that decision. Is this how I want to spend the rest of my life? If your answer is no, then you need to write it down. You need to write down the pros of your situation and the cons of your situation. And that's what I did. I wrote down the pros of my relationship and I wrote down the cons of my relationship. And in my situation, the cons completely outweighed the pros. And so I knew that I had to make the decision to leave. I also think that it's really important to have a strong support system around you. So if you do have somebody that you can reach out to and talk to them and see if you can get an insider's perspective, I think that's really important. Be it a therapist, best friend, cousin, sister, whatever you need, whatever you have, reaching out, having support is super important. I like what you said there as far as a support system. So Dr. Joe Dispenza says something about in order to actually change the environment that you're in, you have to be greater than your environment, greater than time, and then greater than your body. Those three things he really mentions. And so what does that mean as that, as I bring that up, what does that mean to you that you have to be greater in those three areas? So greater than your mind is your mind is always going to tell you, no, this person's going to change or no, the situation could change. Is it your mind or is it your heart? So you actually have to take control. You have to take control of the situation and you have to decide for yourself, is this the environment that I want to be in, right? And if it's not the environment that you want to be in, you have to change your environment, because we become like what? We become like the top five people that we spend the most time with. So if your spouse 
is somebody that you don't want to actually spend time with, then why are you? You have one life to live. And that's what you have to realize is how much are you worth? How much are you willing to let yourself be worth? And then you have to move forward from that. I like that. And something that you mentioned I really, really like is being able to overview, look at your life in the future instead of just in the finite details of today and making that hard decision and asking yourself that actually really resonated with me is I made my decision of my past relationships. And I said, could I be in this for another 20 years? And my answer was hell no, it was absolutely could not. And so that was my realization. Then why am I, then why am I going to do it for the next one or two or three or four or five years? Why am I continuing this on if I don't see this as my, is my outcome? So it really, really did resonate with me. Those that are listening right now and they are trying to, this this title of bravery is really drawn to them and they want to be more brave, but they're stuck in that. What would you suggest as far as, I know you've already given a lot of great tips and a lot of great ideas, but I just want to see if there's anything that else comes up that is somebody that is really suffering maybe in that depression or that numbness that you mentioned And they're so afraid of the unknowns. It's so terrifying. They just don't know if they're going to be okay when they actually do break that cycle. So what I would say is just baby steps. If you're struggling in depression and anxiety, if you're struggling with maybe you're not able to leave your house or you're not even able to get out of bed, just make a goal every single day for one thing out of the norm doing one thing out of the ordinary. If you can't get out of bed, then challenge yourself to take a shower. Just say, hey, if that's the only thing I accomplished today, I'm okay with that and and give yourself gratitude and thanks for that because that's a step forward, right? And then maybe the next day you take a shower and then maybe go for a five minute walk. That way you're boosting your endorphins, you're boosting your feel happy mode, you're getting out of bed and you're feeling accomplished. Maybe the next day your day looks like you get out of bed, you take a shower, you take a walk, and then maybe you water your garden. Whatever that looks like for you, write it out and make a plan. Make a plan for pulling yourself out of it because I'm just going to be honest, there's really no one coming to save you. You have to be brave enough to do it yourself. That's, That's just the bottom line. We are our own heroes and we can do it. We all have the power to do it. But if you have to take it step by step by step, you can do that. And if you're listening to this podcast, then you know that we have a great community of women on Facebook that is willing to help you and empower you and support you through any transformation that you're ready to go through. You just have to be brave enough to get in there and ask. Yeah. Do you think worthiness and bravery go together? No, no, I don't. Because we're all worthy. Whether we believe it or not, we're all worthy. We all deserve to feel happy and we all deserve to live our best life. We are worthy of that. Okay. Bravery to me is just the ability to face your fears on a consistent basis. Your fear is nothing. It doesn't even actually exist. It's just an emotion that your body puts into play because it's the unknown. That's all a fear is, is the unknown. Now, you know that you're not feeling the greatest. You know how you're feeling when you're sitting on your couch all day, but you don't know how it feels to go outside and take a walk through nature. You don't know what it feels like to jump out of an airplane until you do it. So until you do it, you can't be afraid of it. Now, if you do it and you're afraid after that, maybe don't do it again. That's fine, but at least try it once. (laughs) So speaking of jumping out of airplanes, you did do that. So tell us, that is a huge, one of the biggest bravery moves I've ever seen in my life. I mean, tell us about that experience. Man, you know what? It was so wild. And I'm terrified of heights. Like anyone who knows me knows I hate heights, but I knew that skydiving was going to be on my bucket list. It's been on my bucket list since I was 17. Here I am turning 37 and I hadn't done it yet. So I said, you know what? This is my year. If I don't do it this year, I'm not going to do it. 
booked a skydiving flight for my 37th birthday. And it was wildly peaceful. A little nervous walking up to the plane. But once I got in the plane, I went into meditation mode. Um, and your mind truly controls your emotions. I went into meditation mode in the plane. Um, I was just looking out over the scenery, just imagining how beautiful it was going to be as I float gently down to the earth. I wasn't freaking myself out with what if the chute doesn't open? Like, come on. Of course it's going to open. It's opened thousands of times before with this same person, you know, because you're tandem the first time. He's jumped out of the plane thousands of times and it's all in what you tell yourself as you're going up. And so the only time I got a little scared, they opened the door. That was a little, <laughs> little nerve wracking. Oh but God. once we were falling, I was good. I was good. It was amazing. <laughs> okay. So, so you mentioned that something there that I really, really liked. It was instead of the shoulda, woulda, coulda mindset that we can go down, you really put your brain to what it you wanted that experience to look like. And a lot of people do that. Well, if I or should I, or if I could, you know, it goes into all of these different realms that don't even sometimes exist, or it's not even has anything to do with the event, but we almost go into this imagination. So you're, you're so right about the brain being that if zone, tell us how you, how do you manage that and control that mind more? You acknowledge it, acknowledge the feeling that's coming through and thank it and then let it go because it's no longer serving you. I can't, I won't, I don't, I shouldn't. Ew, get rid of them. Yes, you should. You should do all the things. That's how we live a happy, valued life, right? That's how we experience every single human emotion and every single experience that there is to experience is if we allow it to come through. So if you're feeling that I cannot jump out of a plane and you're telling yourself that every single day, you're never going to jump out of a plane because you told yourself you couldn't. If you tell yourself you cannot go out your front door to the grocery store on Tuesday afternoon, you will never do it. So you have to convince yourself that I can do it. I will do it. I'm going to do it because that's the only way you will. I'm jotting notes down. Can, will, and do. You guys got that? That was powerful. I do like the fact that you said just being aware of it at first and thanking it, just that awareness and even catching yourself and realizing that's what you're saying. And so that's what would be the exercise and homework assignment I want to leave you guys with is think about this week. What are you saying? I can't and I won't and I don't. Just exactly what Daisy said there. Just see what comes up and challenge it just slightly and ask yourself, well, what if, what if I changed it to, I can, and I will, and I will do pretty interesting. The brain is very powerful and allow us to either go down the route of bravery or stay in that comfort and that numbness. And so just the uh, last question I have here, Daisy, for you is how are you able to really start to control that mind? Or what did you do for yourself to be able to really route it the way you want to route it? Exactly that um, was just being aware of my thoughts. Meditation can help you slow your slow your thinking down, um, especially if you're anything like me, your brain's going 500 miles an hour, right, all the time. And so meditation really kind of like helps you slow down and kind of acknowledge the thoughts that are coming through your head. So you're actually able to be more aware of the things that you're telling yourself. And just as you're looking at yourself in the mirror, this is one of the biggest things that I had because I have body dysmorphia for years. As you're looking at yourself in the mirror, listen to the way you're talking to yourself. That has a huge effect on whether we will or we won't do something, right? How we talk to ourselves in the mirror. So that's another part of your homework assignment is just listen to how you're speaking to yourself on a daily basis and become aware and then if you notice that you're saying negative things to yourself, stop it. Stop doing that. Start talking beautiful things to yourself. Speak into existence how amazing you are. 
And eventually you're going to start to believe it. I think that is a whole nother podcast. We're going to need Daisy on. Don't you guys all agree <laughs> <laughs> that we need to, to uh, tell us how we need to speak in the mirror? Because that is a, that is a whole, that is a whole beast within itself of what we say to ourselves. And very common that I, what I hear with, um, with women that they struggle with. And so thanks for sharing that. Obviously myself that I struggle with, but thanks for sharing. That was really, really insightful. So those are your homework assignments and um, start to really challenge yourself as you guys are start. You are worth it. You guys heard it. It's not like you're coming into worthiness. You've always been worth it. I love what Daisy said about that. It's really awesome. And that's, I smiled immediately when she said that, because that is so much truth that rang from that, especially of my years on this earth too, of realizing, wow, we all have been worth it this whole time. So thanks for, thanks for bringing that truth up today. Well, it was awesome meeting you, Daisy, and uh, we'll bring you on again and hear more about that mere self-talk. Perfect. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. Have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty Bands and Barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.